بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد so after the Hamas leader uh, Ismail uh, has been killed there is a few points of analysis I would like to share with you number one uh, some news sources are saying the bomb was brought into that particular place two months ago so somehow it can be said that the people that were going to do this assassination knew where he would be exactly in what room he would be of course it was not his first time being there number two there were other iranians there too including fighters and they were not killed number three that <coughs> this clearly shows the situation iran is internally and externally now you have two countries israel and iran israel considers whether it's true or not but israel considers the world around it is not friendly to it that it is cornered but iran is really cornered iran is surrounded by countries that are not very friendly to it and as you may know already that the scientists were being assassinated in Iran and uh, it was happening on a regular basis then now recently the Hezbollah leaders have been assassinated one after the other so one of the powers that Israel has at its disposal is the power of intelligence and the power of surveillance <coughs> And the second, it seems both in the case of Hezbollah as well as Iran, there are moles upon moles, intelligence operators within Iran, intelligence operators within Lebanon and probably in the whole uh, region, including uh, Egypt, including Turkey, including Saudi Arabia including the, the, the Emirates, Israel has put a web of informants for Israel. And it would particularly have these very active and listening to the media and whatever that they do, especially in these times of war. So Israel considers itself cornered and Iran is being cornered. And Iran is being pushed to a place where it has to react. And uh, <clears throat> the other thing that I want to share is that now there will be, because this man, the brother that was killed, this man was the peace leading of leader of the peace negotiations. He was the one that was talking to Qatar, <clears throat> talking to the U.S., talking to Rome, talking to Egypt. And trying to negotiate and they had made some headway in this regard and he had he was moving forward in somewhat a very smart way where he was able to use his intelligence to corner Netanyahu now that he has been killed there will be no peace negotiations till at least the next president of the United States of America is brought on because Qatar and these little countries they really can't do anything <clears throat> until the US label is attached to the negotiations and so like at the time of Uthman radiallahu an, we have uh, in Iran a serious problem of internal uh, you can say internal uh, rebellion against Iran and this is becoming more and more clear by the way its scientists have been killed and now the way this has happened or is it the case that, as some people have questioned, that is Iran somehow trying to make good in terms of Israel and did this itself? Well, my response to that is simply that in analysis, in Sharia, using analysis, we go on the Zahir. We understand we live in an age of deception. But <clears throat> Iran didn't have uh, much to win by helping uh, Israel with this, it seems, even though the question remains. 
But we go, when we do an analysis, the Quran tells us in Surah Al-Kahf, وَلَا تُمَارِهِمْ إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا Don't argue with people except what is apparent. Look at the apparent. The apparent itself, if there's inconsistencies, will give you a picture that there's... When you see inconsistencies in the ظاهر, wait, this is inconsistent. Now you can... Because that will always be there. So we follow the principle Allah gave us in the Quran. Okay, so Israel is now, you know, the U.S. has no leadership now. Biden is gone, basically. Kamala, she's going to be worried about her elections. She's not going to say anything to Israel. She needs that money. Trump, you know, already is there, and he's doing his thing, and he's he has no authority right now. Uh, so Iran's being pushed to the corner, and and the problem here is, and this is a big issue that I do want to talk about, is that one of my big great close friends brought to me is that you know muslims always play the role of the victim and we're not going to get out of our problem till we stop playing the victim and what are the signs of being a victim when you are not willing to stand on your own feet but you're going to protest like beggars in front of others you're a victim when you're going to keep blaming Israel for what is happening to you or to the world, and you're going to keep blaming others for our problems, you're a victim. and you're a, at that point a jahil. Because until we don't learn to stand on our feet as Muslims, what do you think we will gain by these, oh, you have the right to protest and let your voice be known, and so on and so forth. So, what? what what's going to happen after your protests? And so Muslims uh, intellectually are failing. Muslims intellectually are failing. Emotionally, we're failing. Emotionally, we're failing because we're not taking self-responsibility. We're not taking responsibility for ourselves as a people. You know, when we choose a leader amongst the Muslims, he's going to lead us in prayers. Or people come up to me and they question us and they rightfully do but you know what am i doing i'm teaching classes i'm leading some prayers and they say okay do you you know we want to be close to you so we want to know you know uh, do you live uh, uh, in a simple life do you pray tahajjud do you do this do you do this then we'll give you uh bayra or we'll have a relationship with you because now that you're so pure we can have a relationship so for these issues uh, purification of the soul and so you're so like oh my god he has to be so so good so clean okay but then for the person who's running all your affairs the economic affairs your uh, social affairs your political affairs the one who's running that for you the one who's your imam in those issues you don't care about who is running the issues you don't care. You care if your imam is on the side of Palestinians or against the Palestinians. But you don't care if the, the economist who's running the economy of your country, he's for Palestinians or against Palestinians. You don't care if your army chief is for Palestinians or against Palestinians. You don't care if your president or your king is for Palestinians or against P Palestinians. You see, this is because, why? Because our minds have become upside down. Technically, in Sharia, the person who is your leader, you have bayah with him. There's no secularism in Islam. The person who's leading you in your affairs of the world, you have a type of bayah with him. You have a type of contract with him. And this is, you know, whether you take it from Rousseau in, in the secular sense of the idea of social contract, or whether you look at it religiously, this is true. So, Muslims play the victim role. But we don't realize that these punishments are coming to from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a way to forgive those that need to be forgiven, i.e. those people that innocently get killed. This is their, their, you can say, excuse on the Day of Judgment. But the rest of us, where we are, our, our necks are going to be grabbed. That we... Muslims from all the way from Morocco to Indonesia, a whole line of Muslim countries. No one is able to take self-responsibility that let us 
take responsibility for what happens. No. We want to do protests and ask the White House and ask the United Nations. Good luck with that. Because until you don't do Toba, and what is the work that needs to be done? The work is complicated. Doing Toba yourself, and then Toba with your family, and then Toba with your society, establishing the deen of Allah on your society, convincing the people that the deen of Allah is the easy way to go for this life in this world. In fact, let me mention this. One of our points of, or you can say sub-points of Aqidah, or one of the things mentioned in the Qur'an is, is that the deen of Allah is easy. It's the easy way of life. Alcohol and these liberalism, this is not the easy. To become gay is not easy. That's a very difficult way of life. The, what Allah has given us is a much better and easier way of life. In fact, I'm going to do a, a talk on that for my, on that question that deen is easy, uh, probably in the main YouTube channel. But the point I wanted to make here is that <coughs> Muslims need to come out of their victim mentality. We need to know who are the biggest criminals. We are the biggest criminals. Who is responsible for the killing of the Muslims of Palestine? The Muslims are responsible. Anyone who just points the finger at the other without looking at yourself, you're in delusion. You're in delusion. Okay, so let us continue now. The U.S. has lost its leadership. And this has made, by default, the Israel has become the superpower of the world by the very point that America has completely lost its leadership right now. There is no Biden as a president and Kamala Harrison, she's not the president and Trump is not the president. We have people vying for who's going to be the president for the next few months and until then Israel is, you know, Israel is not in control, uh, is, is in control, not the U.S., okay? Not the Middle East, not the peace negotiators, not the United Nations. Okay? All this happens while Netanyahu is in the U.S., while they're in the middle of the so-called peace talks, meaning this killing of this brother. Both Republicans and Democrats licking Israel's boots right now, like I mentioned. The meetings that were taking place in Rome, Egypt, and Qatar, and if you Google Hamas leaders in the last 10 years, most of them have all been killed. This shows Israel doesn't want to negotiate because it's killed other leaders that negotiate and are in that position. Iran is a wreck. Too many moles. Israel, is deeply, uh, has, Israel has deeply infiltrated into Iran. They can step, to, step by step detonate Iran and the way you detonate a building. And this is what they're essentially doing. Okay, They're detonating Iran. And so what does this all mean? This means that Israel is right now in the perfect situation to move forward with its agenda to pave the way for the greater Israel. And this is something known. And this is the situation of Israel internally. And Netanyahu now is in a situation where he has to show victories after such big shame. And so he's going to try to do anything possible to bring about the, to show the people that see, I gave you victory. And so, America is not the leader anymore. Israel is the leader of the world already. And so now, we are one step even closer to the saying of the Prophet ﷺ, Imran al-Bayt al-Maqdas, Kharab al-Yathrib. The building. And once they pave this whole way clear, then their next target will be the West Bank. And my advice to the Muslims of the West Bank, understanding you're dealing with a force that no one can help you against. Because they are Ya'juj and Ma'juj. You can only, in a sense, defend yourself against them, but you can't overcome them. So the Muslims of the West Bank, they need to try to keep the, the Ya'juj and Ma'juj outside the wall as much as possible for as long as possible. And to take persecution without retaliation, like in civil disobedience, like the way the Prophet did it in Mecca Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to take persecution and uh, 
to have sabr, sabrun jameel. Otherwise, they will come and just take the whole area and take Jerusalem the way that they want to. Number two, when they break the walls, you should be ready to move outside the city areas because they're going to take it over. And the Prophet told us they will take it over. And so build the tunnels like the ants build the tunnels in the communities of where the farmland is, in the communities where you can grow your food outside the city. If you don't do this, you will be completely decimated. And whatever resistance you want to build will be only after you have moved outside the city and established these ant tunnels outside the city world. And you know what? This is going to be harsh. But a lot of Palestinians have also backstabbed Palestinians and Islam. If you look at the Palestinian community, for example, in America, you have very liberal Palestinians and you have very religious Palestinians. You have Palestinians, you know, that wear mini skirts and you have Palestinians who what? Who, uh, who are very religious. But as a community, as a whole, when the Adhan goes, they were not praying in the masjid. As a community. When the Adhan went, they were playing on the pool tables rather than coming into the masjid. The masjids were empty. I went there two years ago when the Adhan would happen. The masjids are empty. Al-Aqsa is not full. Fajr prayers are not full. And so, how people who needed the help of Allah were not looking for help from Allah. They wanted help through the means of dunya. This is harsh words, I understand. But this is the reality of the situation. I'm sorry. This is the reality of the situation. And the last thing that I want to mention is, when you kill a peace negotiator, what does it mean? When you kill an ambassador of a country, when you kill somebody who represents, you're calling for war. What happened at the time of Hudaybiyah, uh, when at the time of Hudaybiyah, when Uthman radiAllahu anhu was killed, when you killed the person that went to negotiate, well then you're calling for war. And so this is what they've done. They want war. So be very clear. Israel wants war. Number one. Number two, they will continue to push things to a point of no return. So by the time Trump comes on board, or whoever comes on board, by the time they come on board, they will have no choice but to deal with the cards that they're given. And if they are in a situation that now they will be put in a situation, they have to move in a certain direction for many, many reasons. They're going to bring Trump into a world where there's already chaos and he can only solve the chaos that he's in by the advice of more chaos. Over here I want to mention to join the Al-Fafa community and you can join my channel. Uh, and uh, also I will be on Rumble where I will be expressing my political ideas. And also I will be on Odyssey where I will also be uploading the same video. Uh, and uh, inshallah ta'ala we'll see how this proceeds, if Allah wills. Inshallah, assalamu alaikum. So, with those words, I end. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li walakum, wa li sa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.